hello, and welcome to episode 30 of the Content System for Growth podcast. My name is Michelle, and I'm so happy to have you here. If you often find yourself feeling disorganized and overwhelmed in your business, it may be time to implement a productivity strategy. You can regain control and improve your efficiency by creating a system and structure for your tasks and responsibilities. I'm curious, friend, do you want to explore different strategies and techniques to help you overcome the feeling of being overwhelmed and bring order to your business? Hey, Kim at Book Marketing Mania Podcast. Thank you so much for leaving me a five-star review for my podcast. I appreciate it so much. Kim said, what a blessing to discover Michelle's show as this mama needs all the help she can get with her systems and productivity for my business. I appreciate you, Kim. Thank you so much. Hey, online business owner, welcome to the Content Systems for Growth with me, Michelle Dewey. Are you ready to let go of guilt, stress, and missed deadlines? Are you struggling to keep up with the demands of running a household, taking care of your family, and creating consistent organic content? Well, you're not alone. Juggling all the to-dos of being a mom and owning an online business can be challenging. But here's the good news. By implementing effective content systems and organization strategies, you can streamline your workflow, increase your productivity, and find take control of your schedule. Each week, I'll explore content management systems and mindset hacks to help you rediscover your creativity, passion, and enjoyment in content creating. If you're ready to save time with systemized content marketing strategies and productivity tips, then go refill your coffee mug, pop in those earbuds, and let's tackle that pile of laundry. It's time to reclaim your time and energy while you take your business to the next level. Let's grow, friends. Do you feel like you're stuck chasing an impossible dream every day you turn off your computer, you feel disorganized and overwhelmed? What if you're not chasing an impossible dream, friend? What if you give yourself a roadmap to actually achieve the possible? Everything is doable when you take the right action toward your dream. Take my hand, sister. It's time to figure out how to stop being stuck, disorganized, and overwhelmed in your online business. And here are some productivity strategies that I use when the day spins out of control. Let's be honest, it happens to all of us. So you should know you're not alone in this. The first thing to do is to write it all down. So stay with me here. Track what you're doing during your work day. Now I know what you're thinking. Yes, it is time consuming, but it's worth it. I promise to write everything down you do in the day. And it is very beneficial to see where you're losing time. Where are those time leaks in your day? You need to figure them out. And this doesn't have to be a fancy system. It just needs to be a piece of paper and you record the time and what you're doing. You'll be amazed at how much time you spend in the ladies room. I'm not even kidding you, but it's okay because you should be hydrated. Or the amount of time that you've mindlessly wasted on social media. I don't know about you, but this one is the one that annoys me the most. When I mindlessly waste my time scrolling on social media, without a true objective. If you want to track your time electronically, then try Toggle. It's a great option. I'm tracking my time right now as I write this outline for this podcast. What makes it so easy is it has a Chrome extension that shows up in all the to- all the documents that you use. The next thing we're going to do is plan your week. And now you're thinking, nope, Not going to do it, Michelle. I'm a fly by the seat of my pants entrepreneur, and I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm not a fan of structure, and I crave flexibility in my schedule. That's one of the perks and benefits of being a business owner. That's one of the reasons why I started my business. I know. I can hear you already. The solution is simple. 
instead of coming up with an hour by hour schedule, what if you just pick the top one, two, three things you want to do by the end of the week? At the beginning of the week, you should break down those big tasks into small action you can do quickly without much effort. If you take those small actions daily by the end of the week, you will be able to check off a lot of those big things. If you do not have specific things you want to accomplish and you spin your wheels stuck from lack of clarity, I'm guessing this is where you're feeling disorganized and overwhelmed as a business owner. Figure out how much working time you will actually have to do these tasks. Now, this is an essential time block. All of your meetings and appointments for the weeks need to be time blocked. After you've blocked those, prior to committing to anything else on your calendar. Set aside time to focus on your operations, your client work, and your project planning. You and I know that unexpected things come up. Therefore, there isn't a detailed breakdown of the exact action. Instead, you're just creating space in your weekly schedule to work around the established time commitments. Spend 5 to 10 minutes just mapping out your week. And again, it doesn't have to be rigid. It can be flexible. As a bonus, plan your meals for the week and create a shopping list. I'm not sure about you, but do you know what caused me to feel disorganized and overwhelmed? One simple and reasonable question from my children. Mom, what's for dinner? Do you want to get ahead of this question too? but struggle with meal planning, then I suggest a cookbook called Cook Once, Eat All Week. Oh, girlfriend, meal planning has been a game changer for me since I read that book, or since I should say, started using that cookbook. Because that cookbook sparked my desire to actually create my own eight-week meal plan in Notion. And if you're new to meal planning, Cook Once, Eat All Week lays out all the meal prep to put the meal together in under 15 minutes. Yes, 15 minutes during the weekdays. When you're short on time, this is a blessing. And as a bonus time saver, the mess is made during the prep day, so your kitchen is super easy to clean during the week. Plan your day before the day. Block the time at the end of each day Block time at the end of each of your day to plan out your following day. So this can be rolled up in your wrap up the day time block. So start by blocking out any meetings that have popped up since you planned out your week. Your time blocking. So time blocking keeps like things together. The tasks include writing blog posts, creating social media content, client work, meetings, maybe you just need to time block things that is your family, your work time, whatever it needs to be. Your time blocks need to work for you. This allows you to put time limits on these otherwise time-consuming tasks. You need to fit them into a bucket. Set up a full day or time block for certain hours each day in your weekly schedule. Let me guess, now you're wondering how long to block. Well, to begin with, I want you to double the time for any task that you have no clue how long it will take you. So if you have no idea how long a task will actually take, always double the time that you think it will take or the amount of time you think it will require. If you think it'll take you 30 minutes to write a blog post, but you've never really done it very well in the past, schedule an hour. Attach time to each task on your list. So when you make your list of tasks for the day, I want you to estimate the time it will take you to get complete. If you have 20 things on your to-do list and they will all take you 30 minutes to accomplish, that's 10 hours. In other words, that's 10 hours of solid work without breaks. I don't know about you, but there's no way I want to sit at my desk for 10 hours straight. Setting time in a time block will help you manage your time and then eliminate feeling disorganized and 
overwhelmed. If you still have over half the items on your list at the end of the day, they'll leave you feeling like the day owned you. Or worse yet, you'll push through and try to finish all of those items. Remember, 10 hours at your desk is not good for anyone. Make sure you set yourself up for success, friend. Do a time audit. Now, this is different from above, but you can do it in the same way. If you have no idea how much time you spend doing work, it will be difficult to manage your time. For a week or two, record the time you spend and the items you work on. This can be done by looking at the clock or using toggle again. Buffer time. So what is buffer time? So in addition, your day should include what I call buffer time, or you may also have heard me refer to it before as a fire block. Why is that? Well, you can't sit at your desk all day and you need to get up and move your body. It's sad. Have you heard that sitting is the new smoking? Don't overlook yourself. Leave a minimum of five minutes between each time block. In addition, add that hour of buffer time for those urgent, critical things that need to be handled ASAP. Buffer time allows you to plan for the unknown so that you do not cause a further time leak in your schedule. Know your personal limits, friend. Know your personal limits. We all have personal limits on how long we can focus, and this will vary depending on the time of the day or maybe the time of the month. In the morning, I can focus on 50-minute sprints with a 10-minute stretch break in between those 50-minute sprints. In the afternoon, my focus time plummets and drops down to 25 minutes with a five-minute break in between. Figure out what your personal focus limits are. Keep in mind, again, it could depend on the time of the day or the time of the month that it is. You can keep a journal of how effective you were at certain times of the month so that you can see when you're the most focused. So this is just done by adding one little simple entry into your daily journal that says, How effective was I today? On a scale of one to five, use the Pomodoro method. Google it or I will put the wiki page in a link below so that you can see exactly what that is. And that's working with the 25 minutes on, five minutes off. Or if you have more focus time, hey, change your Pomodoro to be 50 minutes on and 10 minutes off. But they do have some science before behind the actual 25 minutes. I've used an app called Tide on my phone for the Palmadero method, which is also in Do Not Disturb, by the way. Make sure your phone's in Do Not Disturb when you're working with the sound of a cafe. Also, my Mac has the Flow app for the same thing. However, it doesn't have the cafe sound with it. So if you work really well from a coffee shop, Try using Coffitivity on your desktop. I'll also put a link down below in the show notes for this as well, along with a link about coffee shop ambient sounds and productivity. Commit to your business. Earlier, I wrote a post on committing to one project at a time. I used the example that you wouldn't stop running one marathon to run another marathon. That's just plain crazy talk. So I will also put a link to that previous blog post that I wrote in the show notes. The same concept holds true for your business or your project commitments. If you're committed to releasing a new offer, do not work on a new offer and refresh your website at the same time. The focus will be divided and it will take twice as long. Focus on one race at a time until you cross the finish line. Remove your distractions, friends. Set your phone to do not disturb while you are in a time block. Schedule time to respond to your phone calls and read your emails. For the love, do not leave your email open all dang day long. Nothing will derail productivity 
like email. Am I right? Yes. If you're looking for things to distract you, your email will for sure do that for you. Remember, your email is not your to-do list. Answering your email isn't committing to your business. Nope. Before you even start with, oh my goodness, I can't do that. My clients need a response. Yes, I do agree that you need to respond to your clients' emails. I need to respond to my clients' emails as well. But the last time I checked, medals were not given out to the fastest email responder. So if you're trying to win the email race, there's nobody there keeping score. Boundaries need to be set with your client. Boundaries, people. If you do not set them, somebody will set them for you. Be a business owner. Trust me, you will not succeed with somebody else's boundaries. Set a response time expectation for your clients and your business policies. You should clarify this for your clients in your welcome packet so they know right from the get-go when your schedule is to respond to emails. One of my favorite mantras has been, your poor planning does not constitute my emergency. I've said this and lived by it for years. Is it harsh? Yes, but I need to put my business first. And you know what part of that business is? Is doing my client's work. I want to get their work done for them. Learn what should be taken off of your plate. Have you ever heard of the Eisenhower method or the decision matrix before? It assigns priority to your tasks, and this will help you figure out your weekly schedule. They are either important and urgent, important but not urgent, not urgent and not important. So let's go through these together. Important and urgent. This is a do me. This is do this task. If this task is both important and urgent, you do this. This is why you have those buffer times in your calendar and on your schedule. Furthermore, it should also be an income generating task for you, the business owner. This can only be done by you or handled by you. No one else is able to do it. Important, but not urgent. This should be scheduled on your calendar to get done. Put it in your project management system as a item to do. Urgent but not important. This item should be delegated to somebody else to do if you have the luxury of having a team. You can begin to hand over these tasks to a virtual assistant if you've been considering hiring one. Start keeping a running track of all of those urgent but not important tasks. Not urgent and not important. Do you want to know what you do with these tasks? You delete it. You cross it off. If it's not urgent and not important to your business growth, why would you spend time doing this? If you'd like to read more about the Eisenhower Method, I'll go ahead and put a link to James Clear with some information that he's done on this. It's a pretty quick read, so it shouldn't take you very long. I know this is going to be filled with all kinds of links to different resources in the show notes today. It's important that you figure out your challenges with productivity and time management. Do you know what they are? Start paying attention to the things that you have resistance to and you're not getting done. Wow, friend. Holy cow. This was long. So I think it's time to wrap it up with a quick recap just to refresh your memory. We're going to start tracking your day. You're going to plan your week and your day ahead of time. You're going to time block your weekly schedule or your calendar. You're going to double the time you think it will will take to get it done. You're going to attach time to everything on your to-do list. You're going to audit your time so you know where you actually are spending your time. You're going to add buffer time to your daily and weekly schedule for all those little fires that come up during the day. You're going to figure out what your focus time is. So how long can you actually focus 
and stay engaged in your activity that you're working on. You're going to commit to one project at a time. I call it a marathon. You may also hear it referred to as building one bridge at a time. You're going to remove all your distractions. You're going to try out that Eisenhower method to figure out what should you should be doing immediately, what you should schedule, what you should de delegate, and what you should delete. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. If you do these things repeatedly every week, you'll have a planning system. See how simple a system can be to create. Thank you, friends, so much for listening. I appreciate you, and I hope you have a wonderful week. Yay! Thank you so much for listening. I hope that you found this episode valuable and learned some actionable tips that you can implement in your business so that you can feel accomplished and less stressed. If you enjoyed this show, please take a quick minute to share this with your business bestie, subscribe, and leave a review. It helps me reach more business owners just like you. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover in future episodes, please reach out to me on my website. I've created a form just for you. Remember, with the right system and mindset, you can achieve the success your heart desires. Thank you for tuning in. I look forward to chatting with you next time. I appreciate you and I hope you have a wonderful week. And don't forget, let's grow, friends. Mm -hmm.